and I think that that speaks uh, very directly to one of the biggest issues that we saw, you know, during your race, especially in the home stretch, which is the worst time to have, you know, the sort of this dissension, if you will. You already have enough with the millions of dollars in the horrific ads that they were playing. Uh, the billboard, we remember that we saw oh, when we were in Cleveland, uh, you know, calling you an anti-Semite and all that stuff. Uh, but then you have the other part of the equation, which is a sort of nihilistic movement with the online left that thinks that you can never do enough. I mean, I try to tell people you invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in a television ad in the Cleveland metro area saying that you support Medicare for all. And yet it wasn't enough that you did that. It's like, no, you have to come here and do this and that. And I'm just thinking there's too much of this. There's this huge problem on the left where there's this idea that I would rather be right than be effective. And that is something that you, I, I say this to anybody who's going to see this interview and we know a lot of you will. So think about what that means in terms of what you want to accomplish going forward. If you have any aspirations of Medicare for all, a living wage, ending the wars, a green new deal, then you're going to have to swallow your pride in some instances and recognize that it's not, you're not going to get everything you want at once, but so long as the person in question is fighting on the side of workers and not corporate special interests, Come on. that is the winning play, period. And I'm curious if, if you have any thoughts on that, because that was something no. that really set us no, off. No, I'm so sick of the purists. I'm so sick of them, the overwoke, yeah. damn purists. Like, if you don't agree with me, you say one thing, and then I'm going to keep... Bri These are people that are bitter. They decide they don't like you, and then they use everything to work backwards from their conclusion, and they will find every little nitpicky thing. That's not on my team. Like, you're not working on our team. Well, you're, not not, well, you're not seeking progress. Well, to be fair, they're not on our team right now. That doesn't mean they could That's ultimately true. be. That's true. You're, you're displaying right. yeah. behavior that is not team-like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome two let's call this one you've left this shit out this is going to be a really quick episode i got it i'm home with a sick daughter you can't come on camera now go go can you lay down up here so i'm a home at the sick daughter do you need some tissue sweetheart no okay so then you want to get up there or you want to go watch tv okay we'll stay over there all right <laughs> so i'm at home with a sick daughter and uh this conversation about nihilism creeped into my head. I started seeing videos and I started looking up stuff more and more and where it just got to where I had to come on and just kind of talk about a couple of things, but um, go to the other one. Yeah. Um, to talk about a couple of things and um, nihilism is on the top of that uh, list. So um, this clip, there's a lot in this clip. <laughs> that we need to cover and in the longer episode maybe we'll get to the longer episode also but there's a lot in this clip we're going to cover i got another clip too and then some tweets uh to cover um but yeah we're going to get into this discussion uh, in just a second but before we do that like always let's go ahead and like this stream let's get some more people in the chat we have what we're up to like 80 people or so right now so that should be like 80 likes if we can get that up. And then that'll allow more people to join um, this conversation. Also, if you want to be part of our mailing list or our sub stack, um, this is our sub stack. You can join and be notified for streams like this and other uh, uh, streams. So what did I get that? So sub stack, like, oh, and Patreon. If you're able to support us financially, However small, Patreon is the best way. Actually, it's the only way right now. We have been demonetized on YouTube, so no super chats. No super chats right now. All right, so let's <laughs> let's get back to the video. And um, let's just put nihilism up here on the screen. Um, let's get back to the video. I'm going to replay it, and then we're going to break it down uh point by point here so let's replay it and i think that that speaks uh very directly to one of the biggest issues that we saw you know during your race especially in the home stretch which is the worst time to have you know the sort of this dissension if you will you already have enough with the millions of dollars in the horrific ads that they were playing uh the billboard we remember that we saw oh, when we were in cleveland ridiculous. uh you know calling you an anti-semite and all that stuff uh, but then you have the other part of the equation, which is a sort of nihilistic movement with the online. 
I guess the first question I would have, or the first assessment, the first comment I would have is, why are you worried about online leftists? Why don't you go do what you say you want to do without us? And what is an online leftist? Are they only leftists online? Because I would call that the squad. But if, if you know reformist leftists use this term online leftist as a derogatory, a derogatory term. It's not meant to be just a descriptive. Okay, it's meaning you're espousing you are espousing all this shit online, but not really doing anything. That's what that means. So let's get back to the video and get some more uh, more takes on this online left that thinks that you can never do enough. I mean, I try to tell people the online left thinks that you can never do enough. The that framing. As if they've done anything. As if they've done anything, then you say, you can, then they can reply with that, with them not doing anything by saying, you can't please them. You'll never do enough. You haven't done anything. So let's get back to this with uh, Jen. And I, you know, I know, did I, did he tell me his name before? I just don't remember. I hate not referring to this person because I don't want to be disrespectful. I just don't know his name. So I'll say Jen and her partner. You can never do enough. I mean, I try to tell people you invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in a television ad in the Cleveland metro area saying that you support Medicare for all. And yet it wasn't enough that you did that. It's like, no, you have to come here and so, do this and that. And I'm just thinking. So let's examine that because this, this, what he just points out is part of the reason why the the reformist leftists and re revolutionary leftists can't find uh can't come together because the threshold of doing something whatever that th your threshold is reformist left reformist leftist threshold for giving a politician credit is way down here and revolutionaries threshold is way up here. Let's listen before I give any more commentary. Let's listen. And yet it wasn't enough that you did that. It's like, no, you have to come here and do this and that. And I'm just thinking there's too much of. This oh, I forget the, the full point I was making. Let's listen to what he thinks is doing something. Because he says he named something and then he says that wasn't enough. Let's listen to what he names here of dollars in a television ad in the Cleveland metro area saying that you support Medicare for all. And yet it wasn't enough that you did that. It's like, no, you have to come here and so, do this and that. And I'm just thinking. So for a reformist leftist putting up an ad on TV, and I would imagine doing tweets also, is enough. That counts as doing something. So when you're saying, we're, oh, we, we got these people doing something, that counts as doing something, putting money towards an ad. Preposterous, but let's, let's listen. Some Tell more. people you invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in a television ad in the Cleveland metro area saying that you support Medicare for all. And yet it wasn't enough that you did that. It's like, no, you have to come here and do this. It wasn't enough that you put an ad. It absolutely is not enough. It's absolutely not enough to put up an ad and that be it. Absolutely not. Let's, uh, where's your button? Let's continue. Let, I'm trying to get through this, but. This and that, and I'm just thinking, there's too much of this, there's this huge problem on the left where there's this idea that I would rather be right than be effective. And that's so is weird because that's the exact phrase I would use for your strategy your reformist strategy. You would rather be right than actually get something done. So this, this whole beating this dead horse of going through the Democratic Party, you're going to keep doing that because you want you have to be right that that strategy is going to work. When it's been proven over and over not to work.
the left, where there's this idea that I would rather be right than be effective. You would rather be right than if you have to be right that going through the Democratic Party is the right way than be effective by not going through the Democratic Party, organizing, protesting, direct action, revolutionary style, that will get you what you want a lot faster. And that is something that you, I, I say this to anybody who's going to see this interview, and we know a lot of you will. So think about what that means in terms of what you want to accomplish going forward. If you have any aspirations of Medicare for all, a living wage, ending the wars, a Green New Deal, then you're going to have to swallow your pride in some instances and recognize let's, that let's, let's, it's, let's take that. that, that anybody who's, let's and take that. that is something that you, I, I say this to anybody who's going to see this interview, and we know a lot of you will. So think about what that means in terms of what you want to accomplish going forward. If you have any aspirations of Medicare for all, a living wage, ending the war. If you have any aspiration for Medicare for all, ending the war, a living wage, going through the Democratic Party is the is the opposite of what you should be doing to get those. That's the correct assessment. That's the correct sentence. Let's listen to how what he says, though. The wars, a Green New Deal then you're going to have to... A Green New Deal is definitely not coming out of the D D Democratic Party. Follow your pride in some instances and recognize that it's not you're not going to get everything you want at once, but so long as the person in question is fighting on the side of... Who? Workers and not corporate special interests. Come on. That is the winning play, period. No, 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 no. I'm going to erase that period and put a comment there because I have a comment because there is no period to that bullshit. Have any aspirations of Medicare for all, a living wage, ending the wars, a Green New Deal, then you're going to have to swallow your pride in some instances and recognize that it's not, you're not going to get everything you want at once. But so long as the person in question is fighting on the side of workers and not no, that's not good enough. So long as a person is fighting on the side, one, we have to determine what do you mean fighting? What does fighting look like to you? Because some people would say the squad is fighting. Some people would say AOC is fighting. So what do you mean by fighting? To not corporate special interests? Come on. That is the winning play, period. And I'm curious if, if you have any thoughts on that, because that was something no. that really set us no, off. No, I'm so sick of the purists. I'm so sick of them. The yeah. So clearly, Jen is upset. Clearly. She's upset because one, for one, of course, um, we went on her show, told her basically, fuck uh, electoralism. I'll find a clip and I'll put it up for you. Fuck electoralism. And ever since that day, she's been hot on the topic of, Nia, of, of, of online left. Her. Watch. Listen to how her anger. I'm so sick of the purists. I'm so sick of them. Watch. Period. And I'm curious. Play. Period. And I'm curious. She's been waiting to say something about this. And it, then she finally has the opportunity. If you have any thoughts on that, because that was something nope. that really set us no, off. No, I'm so sick of the purists. I'm so sick of them. The overwoke yeah. damn purists. Like, if you don't agree with me, you say one thing, and then I'm going to keep. These are people that are bitter. They decide they don't like you, and then they. We're bitter. We're bitter. I mean, I don't like her, so that part she got right, but we're bitter. Let's see. We have a Democratic Party that fails to deliver. We have a leftist or people who are labeled themselves as leftist progressives in Congress who don't do anything. If we're bitter, we absolutely have the fucking right to be bitter. Because we delivered you to Congress and you're not doing one thing. But you want us to keep voting for you. Absolutely not. Before I get into the, the next, uh, keep going here, let's do a like check. And then we're going to do a chat check because I forgot. I just remembered I forgot to do that. So we're going to do a chat check uh, to make sure. Um, we 
we have a hundred likes, we can get to another hundred easily. Like in the next five minutes, we have well over two or three. Wait, it's still refreshing. But I know the last check, we was over 300, 200 people. Um, so we could get another hundred likes instantly. Let's push those likes up. Let's subscribe to our uh, we don't know how much long RBN is going to be on YouTube. So we've, you know, we've planned for that. So we've, you know, we've added a lot of other social media platforms that we put our content on. But the best thing is for you to join our mailing list to make sure you're always in contact with us. Oh, and one thing I forgot, the mailing, if you join our mailing list, you'll get exclusive access to our Discord. It hasn't launched yet. The Discord hasn't launched yet, but it will be launching. The Discord will uh, be for those who are part of our uh, Substack. So now let's do a chat check. A hundred and some odd <laughs> comments already. Um, I'm very curious to see what everybody has to say. I know Jen Perlman is a trigger for a lot of people. So let's see uh, what everybody is saying in the chats. Yeah, they're garbage. Uh, okie dokie. I am going to take advice from these two lumps. Okay. Teach me, Jen. Nikki O right here. I love the color purple, but their shade of purple is as weak as their politics. Love it. Uh, they are very afraid. I remember when they kicked you from their show for calling out their pandering. Yes. And since you brought it up, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find that clip. Jen Perlman, I think uh, I think I posted it. But let's see if we can do a quick search. Compton made me, and let's just put Jen Perlman. Let's see. I don't know if I put her name in the tweet. Sure, that will bring it up. Uh, it brings up the new video I did. Let's see if there's the original video. Uh... Oh, is this it right here? Just bear with me, everybody. I am looking for the clip. I'm looking for the clip. I'm looking for the clip. But anyway, um, as I'm looking for that, but I will find a clip. Uh, I have so many clips to to check. Uh, check your inbox or Twitter. I sent you a Kwame Toure clip. I will check that, sir. All right. CJ Stream. Liberals punch in one direction, only left. Democrats are about to get destroyed in midterms. Absolutely. Pro-abortion was using purple today. CIA gave marching orders and CIA left complied. BJG, Kyle, uh, Crystal, Marion, all calling us nihilists. Now, we're, I have another video where we're going to we're going to delve into the actual meaning of nihilist because this is actually not new. This tracks back to a long, long time ago. And. The thing is, when I when we go over the actual understanding of political nihilists, you might listen to it and go, you know what? I am a nihilist. Once we explain, but they're obviously using it in a derogatory way. So um, that video is coming with the Antichrist. In the White House, nihilism is a responsible response. It scares the establishment when people not participating in corrupt electoral politics. Holding people accountable equals nihilism. And no, that's that's a pop culture word, holding them accountable. What is the fuck does that mean? Because if you critique them on if you critique them, what are they saying? We're crazy. The dumb dumb. So you can't use words and when you say primary them, oh, you're going overboard, then what do we do? We can't talk about them. You don't want them out of office. How exactly do you hold somebody who's a politician accountable if you don't want those two? Explain that to me. It Because all they say is hold them accountable. 
What the fuck does that mean? In California, June primary, I'm voting third party, Green Party, Peace and Freedom Party, no Dems. Wow, two faces from the past. <laughs> G off, Jen and my. I can't believe I discovered yesterday or the day before that Vouch and Jen are buddies. So, reformist leftists, people who are wanting to be in the streets. Those are nihilists. Those are nihilists and not on your team. But Vouch, who literally talks about labor organizing in a bad way, like he talked about our general strike, that's okay, though. Do you see now the issue with wealthy white liberals being the main voices, having the mics in front of them for this movement? So let's uh, let's continue. Let's and I'm gonna stop there. Let me mark this spot here so I know where to come back to to begin more comments. I'm trying to get through all of them. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I was supposed to be looking for that clip. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, is you know what? I may just have to. Get it from uh, YouTube, because I know it's on YouTube. I was trying to find it on uh, Twitter, so I didn't have to like search through through the thing. But I guess I can put it up here. Oops, where is it? Um, okay, so here it goes. I got it. All right, so I will play it. Let's see. Okay, so I'll Mommy. hang on one second. Uh, actually, I'll hold on. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Somebody was knocking at the door. My little girl went there, but it's my wife and other daughter. Anyway, um, let they're coming in. Anyway, I found the clip. I'm gonna play it through the YouTube video, and let me share that now. Stop sharing this one. And let me share the next one. Um, sorry, I can hear my wife talking in the background. So it's a little distraction. I'm going to close the door in a second here. All right. <laughs> all right. And you know, my, my daughter sees her mom here and now she's acting all baby. It's like, oh, you know, so she has to be baby. That's what's happening right now. But let's go to this clip. I'm going to bring myself down here so the clip is a little bit bigger. Um, and actually, let me just take myself off so you can see the whole thing. This is from um, my old show. Not an old show, but I don't haven't done it in a while. But Straight Out of Politics, where I play the clip. And let's listen. Um, actually, I'm sharing the wrong thing. I should be sharing... This one. Was that the one I was sharing? Oh, it is the one I'm sharing. So let's uh, let's play it from here, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. As uh, time uh, progresses. So this this video here, I, I, like I said, this is the first clip um, that, people, some of that I'm going to show. This is the clip where they cut uh, me off or drop us from the fee. So let's play it. It's, uh, what? A minute and a half, a little over a minute and a half, 50,000 views. Let's check this out. Well, it's just, naming, the people, I'm some of the, the groups that you're naming, the people, those circles, like I'm not sure they're hearing us. What group? The, the group that you just named. You named them. No, you're just talking about. No, I, I Jay, I understand what, what you're saying. And I, I no, let me. Let, let, oh. I don't know. You just rambled off something. No, what I'm what, what I'm saying is I, I think that the, there is there there comes a point where. The entire thing just becomes useless in terms of where we're currently going. And so I totally understand where you and Afini are coming from and the whole concept of the movement. You know, that's why we are here. We do set, we, we absolutely support reparations. We've actually been very vocal. At Please don't pander to me. Please there do is not a, yeah, pander to me yeah, right yeah, in my no, face. No, it, do not do that because what? Jay, Okay. 
it is clear that they wanted to come here and ambush and us. Ambush us. And, that is and, a, and I told you, and I wasn't on their happy. show. <laughs> I, this was definitely this is, something that you know I was we expecting. Were, we were trying to have a fair conversation, trying to be yeah. open. And with I told them. you that no matter what happens, we're going to just, everyone's going to hate <laughs> us for however this is. And the truth is, I, I don't. Ah, oh, that guy that was on the show too. Let just let me just tell you, he hit us up and was like, I'm with y'all. That guy that was on their show, we came on. Ah, <laughs> oh, that shit was fucking hilarious when that shit happened. But if you notice when he said, like, that was a clear pandering. That we were at a part of the discussion where there was clearly a divide. And it was, you can cut the tension on the screen. So what did he do? He fell back and wanted to pander to go, calm down, calm down, Negro. Calm down, angry Negro. Because I'm for reparations. And I had to look down like, I know this motherfucker is not pandering to me right now. So I felt like... uh the best time is now to to freaking call this bullshit out, and and that was what uh, happened. Now, why it got to that point is because I was invited on the show to talk about common ground, and I went on there, and they were talking about electoral politics as if we were down with it. So I was like, well, this this was clearly not what I was told was going to be talked about and now you're trying to act like you're you're presented as like we're down with electoralism which we're not and that's where it that's where the conversation led is there um let's let me do a quick chat check because i know i played that so some people might have some comments about peter is his name okay thank you for that so peter is his name let's not i don't want to disrespect peter by calling, you know, so I didn't, I forgot his name, but now that you say that, I do remember his name is Peter. Jen's holding a grudge. She jumped right in. Oh yeah. And she, after this clip, I didn't play all of it. She started talking about us after she dropped us. Then she started talking about us, calling us you people, that type of thing. No surprise that he's part of the real estate machine. I like plandering, perfect new word <laughs> for streamers, pandering. If I said plandering, um, I meant pandering. Yeah, live, it was pretty, pretty. Oh, you thought Jim was cool. Well, welcome, socialist girl. Welcome here that you're learning that she's not. We're glad to see you here. Um, I won't read that, but it's on the screen. Oh, you don't know who they are? Jen Perlman ran against Debbie Wasserman Schultz for her seat in Florida. That's how we all know Jen. We saw this progressive. This is how me and Jen, we used to be cool. I was pushing her. Yeah, this is back when I thought we were still doing this, the Justice Democrat strategy. Until I wised up and figured out that that was bullshit, right? Yeah, it was completely uh, disrespectful. And how do you ambush somebody going on being invited on their show? How do you ambush somebody doing that? That's a new type of ambush. Hey, I'm coming over. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Cuz she couldn't believe she told me later she couldn't believe I actually said that. So she couldn't believe, she was happy I said it, but she couldn't believe I actually, yeah, she's playing the victim card. Yes, absolutely. All right, now let's get back into uh, the clip. Uh, what am I playing? Yeah, let's get back into the clip so I can finish this and get to the next thing. Here we go. And they use everything to work backwards from their conclusion and they will find every little nitpicky thing. That's not on my team. 
Like you're not working on our team. Well, you're not. not on, well, they're, pro, you're not seeking progress. Well, to be fair, they're not on our team right now. That doesn't mean they couldn't. That's open. Listen, you, we will never team up unless you come to our side. There won't be any teaming up for the a, a Democratic Party. And the reason, because the thing is, why not let nihilists be nihilists? They're out of your way. The reason you're not let, letting so-called leftist nihilists is because you know you need us. That's why you complain. Otherwise, you would just not say anything. Those people don't want to participate like the other hundreds of other 100 million people that don't participate. You would just go, oh, they're not participating. But you know that you need us to get Nina Turner elected, to get any progressive elected. And therein lies the frustration for them, at least. Because we have a different set of... Uh, reasons to be uh, frustrated. So let me just start it back a little bit to get her whole rant before it ends. And then Nina kind of says a couple words, but we'll bring up the full interview so we can see the whole Nina Turner interview. Play, period. And I'm curious if you have any thoughts on that, because that was something no. that really set us no, off. No, I'm so sick of the purists. I'm so sick of them, the overwoke yeah. Damn purists, like if you don't agree with me, you say one thing and then I'm gonna keep... These are people that are bitter, they decide they don't like you, and then they use everything to work backwards from their conclusion, and they will find every little nitpicky thing. That's not on my team. Like, you're not working on our team. Well, you're, not not on, well, you're not seeking progress. Well, to be fair, they're not on our team right now. That doesn't mean they could ultimately true. be. That's true. You're, you're displaying right behavior that is not team-like. Mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody. It's kind of busy at me house, at me casa right now. It's four. Uh, 425 at my casa right now. So actually, let's let's bring up the full clip because I do want all of you to have a chance to hear what actually first let's go. I forgot I have this David Sorota. So David Sorota actually talks about this also. Now, uh, yeah, let me bring up the clip first. Let me bring up the item first before uh, I say, I'm going to read the caption. That'll be a better way of summing up what I was just about to say. I think I said better in the tweet. So let me read it to you. Actually, I'll show you the, the entire thread. So this is what spawned this stream right here. Is this thread here. The new buzzword, let me enlarge this for... So this is what I, my, my tweet here. The new buzzword for, for, for reformist leftists is nihilist or nihilism. If refusing to support one of the racist imperialist parties is being nihilist, then I'm a proud nihilist. Disclaimer, the term nihilist is completely being misused by reformist leftists. Now let's go to the clip. So, you know, I was, after I, you know, put this out, um, and it was because I saw something some, from somebody else talking about nihilism. Um, actually, I'm not going to say that. Let's just play the clip. I did look for, let me look for what they're talking about. Let me see what they're describing as nihilism. Because I know what nihilism is, a textbook definition of it. But let me see what they're talking about. So I start try to search for some footage and content that explain reformist point of view. And I found David Sirota. And this is my caption, what I said. Giving up on the duopoly and wanting to burn it down without any strategy may be nihilism. But... Revolutionary leftists aren't saying do nothing. We're saying do something else in place of the duopoly. Big difference. Important point, David's wife, Emily Sirota, is a Democrat. So make sure you understand or make sure you take in, that into account when you hear what he's arguing, the point of view that he's arguing here. And here is 
David Sirota on nihilism, nihilist. Yes, I've had moments where I'm like, you know what, I'm I'm out, like I'm done. I I I hate this. I can't look at it every day. I like it's it's so nauseating. It's so pointless. And I have those days. And you know, like, and by the way, I don't begrudge people who say, look, I I just I, I can't focus on this anymore. It's just too it's too depressing. I'm not saying like those people are bad. I get that impulse, but I also think like, and by the way, I also think like just saying, oh, you know, they're all corrupt. You know, nothing good can possibly happen. And anybody who's trying to work in that system, you must be corrupt or at least stupid by trying to fix things because the whole system is corrupt. You know, sort of the black pill idea. Like, I just, you yeah. know, there's a blue pill, the red pill, and the black. Like, I reject that too. Like, you're not smarter by just walking away. Like, you're not better than people uh, by walking away. I would argue you are smarter by walking away. That's what I would say. You are smarter by not voting red or blue. You're not smarter by just walking away. Like you're not better than people uh, by walking away. And by the way, you're not better than people by saying, you know, um, anybody who's ever voted for a Democrat is supporting the duopoly. Like, here's the thing. Because he's going to vote for a Democrat, his wife. You see all the entanglements that even these so-called journalists have that they don't really disclose? Like, for example, Crystal Ball saying, no, let's give Jordan Sheraton, like, uh, uh, I'm not going to say that. So let's, let's move on. Let's listen to the rest of David, uh, Sirota. ...than people uh, by walking away. And by the way, you're not better than people by saying, you know, um, anybody who's ever voted for a Democrat is supporting the duopoly. Like, here's the thing. The Democratic Party is super corrupt. But in the short term, right, in the context, for instance, of the reconciliation bill, all you have right now is a Democratic Party and a Republican Party in Congress. Like, like you've got to try to get like there's a climate crisis happening it's a ticking time bomb like you you have to try there's a climate crisis there's a ticking time bomb so why the fuck are you trying to go through the democratic party which is the slowest way that's our point we don't have time for electoral politics the very point you're trying to make applies to you Going through the Democratic Party for any any sort of uh, climate change is the slowest way to get there. Gaining political power through the Democratic Party for leftists is the slowest way to get there. Leftists would gain more power faster through the through the uh, through a third party than through the Democratic Party or the GOP. How? Let's say AOC, all of the squad, Bernie Sanders, all of a sudden, overnight, switch to the Green Party. That gives them leverage because both parties are going to need them to get legislation passed, or at least the Democratic Party. So now it's, you want my vote, I need this, this, and this. But if you join a party, it's, you're my friend, don't rock the boat. Yeah, 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 we'll get to your thing next time. Meanwhile, people are dying. This is the issue with wealthy, rich, white leftists being the main voices. They're willing to sell the issues that are important to you out to get the issues that's important to them done. There are plenty, plenty of white allies that are great. But the wealthy ones who have been a part of this left media infrastructure for five, for three, four, five, six, seven years or more, you are the problem.
you are the problem for the left. You've been a part of this left at this at the table speaking all these years. What have materialized from your strategy? What has materialized from your strategy? Rational national? The squad? How's that going? Humanist report? TYT? Majority report? This is the problem. Wealthy, white, leftist, liberals, progressives, whatever you want to call them, is the problem because they are the ones that's leading the, their audience, the masses, down the wrong path of disappointment. Try to get this horrible, corrupt system to, to try to do the right thing, stipulating that it is horrible, it's corrupt, the game is rigged. All of that stuff is stipulated, but like walking away from it or, or just sort of rolling your eyes and saying anybody who's even trying to participate in it is stupid, dumb, and or complicit. Like, I just reject that. Nobody gives a fuck what you reject. Um, and um, we underst you understand how we're not to take any part of what he's saying as valid other than he's speaking because his wife is a Democrat, period. You're speaking Jordan Sheraton about against nihilism because you want access to Nina Turner who's running. And I'm tired of, of, of this giving Jordan Sheridan some sort of uh, this, 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 this grand uh, thank you because he's a fucking journalist. As if because you're a journalist, that means you're supposed to be given any more validity than the person who's working at Walmart. Who gives a fuck if you're a journalist? Like, we're supposed to pat you on the fucking back. Get the fuck out of here. You talking about your journalism that's financed by your people? After you left Fox News and worked for TYT? Get the fuck out of here. Let's continue with the full video. Bullshit ass. Just bullshit. Um, so I played that video, played this video. I am looking for so actually let, let me do this. I'm going to now play it's like a two-minute video that kind of talks about the historical context of uh how do I exit out of this? Okay, there we go. The historical context. So let me just look up neat. Actually, let me go to History here. Where's my history? All right. So it's a two minute video. It kind of lightly speaks about uh, the definition of like uh, like historical nihilism, political nihilism. So let me, it's pulling up now. Let me stop sharing here and I'll share the new one and while we have this short little break while i bring up this video if you could please uh like the stream let's get some more people in let's see where we're at though let's see where we're at here as far as likes the last check i did was 180 but that was a little while ago so let's see where we're at and if we have room for improvement Political here. Political nihilism involves believing and acting on the belief that one's current social and political order is so corrupt that it... All right. Sorry. It kind of started when I was looking at a different screen. But anyway, um, what I was looking for... What was I looking... Oh. We are at 200, 204 likes. 
Um, we can probably add another 50. So maybe let's try to get to 250 before the next check. I'll probably do another check in like 20 minutes. So let's see if we can get to uh, 250 by in the next 20 minutes. And now this is a short video. It briefly goes over it. Um, we'll talk about uh, bits and pieces of it. Um, but let's listen um, to this video. Political nihilism involves believing and acting on the belief that one's current social and political order is so corrupt that it must be destroyed rather than reformed. The term nihilist was used in mid 19th century. Russia. Now, uh, now when you hear that, this is what I was telling you, you hear that you're like, wait a minute. Well, maybe I'm a nihilist because I think that too. So let's listen again. Hi, political nihilism involves believing and acting on the belief that one's current social and political order is so corrupt that it must be destroyed rather than reformed. I mean, isn't that what we're saying? That our social and political, the social and political order, our status is so corrupt that it must be destroyed rather than reformed. I would say that's correct so far, but there's more. The term nihilist was used in mid 19th century Russia to describe small groups of violent revolutionaries and terrorists. The term Now you got to think mid 19th century Russia is the 1850s and what's go what's going on during that time. Just think that. Popularized by Igor Turgenev's 1862 novel Fathers and Sons in which a character tells his father that a nihilist is a man who does not bow down before any authority, who does not take any principle on faith, whatever reverence that principle may be enshrined in. Later in the novel, a nihilist leader declares, we act by virtue of what we recognize as beneficial. At the present time, negation is the most beneficial of all, and we deny everything. When told his movement must build as well as destroy, he responds, that's not our business now. The ground wants clearing first. So he's so basically, well, you what is your plan? Do you have a plan after you tear it down? He's like, well, th that's not that's not a topic of discussion right now. Let's get the ship tore down first. Then we can get to that. Basically, what he's saying here. Let's continue. First, this is the spirit of political nihilism. Clear the ground first then tackle the problem of rebuilding. Do not let the lack of a plan for afterwards delay the required destruction now. Let's replay that part. Don't let the lack of how you're going to rebuild deter you or slow you down from tearing the shit down. Rebuilding. Do not let the lack of a plan for afterwards delay the required destruction now. Political nihilists reject present beliefs and practices and act to destroy the social institutions that embody those beliefs and practices. Let me just, now let's do a chat check. Thus far now, he hasn't gotten to some parts where you might disagree, but thus far, does this sound, does this sound like some, a way you would describe yourself for those in the chat? Is this something you, how you would describe yourself so far based off what he said? Um, you cannot have a working class revolution when 55% of the working class identifies with conservative politics. Yeah, um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not on board with that comment. Yeah. I'm not on board with that one. Uh, uh, here. Nihilism is something you can subscribe to. Political nihilism is absurd because we're not subscribed to an ideology, ideology of giving up over... This sounds like it was incomplete there. Proletarian revolution. Now, 
Nihilism table for two, please. <laughs> yes, I know. I know it's not. I, I know a lot of people call it nihilism, but you're supposed to say nihilism. Nihilism like that. But um, I'm going to say nihilism because it's easier for me to roll it off my tongue. But the person in that comment is right. The correct way is uh, nihilism. That's what you're supposed to say. Jordan Sharon is controlled opposition. Absolutely. All right. So let's continue with it's a, a few, uh, maybe 30 seconds or less of this explanation. Let's see if he adds anything elder to this definition. Though often accused of loving destruction for its own sake, most Russian nihilists spoke of hope for a new order after the fall of present institutions. But their vision of the future and how to build it was vague and inarticulate. Rather than a clear positive program, they had a naive assumption that whatever came after the paroxysm of destruction would be better than the status quo. The term nihilist fell into disrepute in the 1870s as revolutionary cells became more and more violent, culminating in the 1881 assassination of the Tsar. Its association with terrorist violence led many revolutionaries to abandon the label. And that's where the label nihilism began to take a different connotation. Because of this. Ultimately, political nihilism is less a philosophical view than a label for a political attitude or agenda that is quick to destroy, but lacks disciplined follow through. That's my quick summary of political nihilism. Thanks for watching today. Hey, Miss, who already said? Then a label for a political attitude or agenda that is quick to destroy. Hang on a second. Uh, one second here. Association with terrorist violence led many revolutionaries to abandon the label. Ultimately, political nihilism is less a philosophical view than a label for a political attitude or agenda that is quick to destroy but lacks disciplined follow through. That's my quick summary of political nihilism. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye. So, you tell me with this description, why is political nihilism bad? Why is political nihilism bad? The actual definition, not how the misuse, how the misuse definition, <laughs> the misused version of the word. So that is, uh, I was going to say something else, but I think I'll pause there for that clip. That is um, the explanation. So now I do want to kind of go to where we saw the David Sirota clip because it's a longer clip um, with, uh, actually, let me put it back up because I can, you can come on and search with me. Um, so let's just click here. Uh, what else came up here? There was another video. Oh, so this is the full version right here. So I'm going to pop this up, pause it real quick. But this is the full version of that same interview. Um, let's listen some more to what he says. Now, it's going to be a little overlap, so it's a little bit of he's what I've already played, Just but the, then it goes into more. To try to do the right thing. Stipulating that it is horrible. It's corrupt. The game is rigged. All of that stuff is stipulated, but like walking away from it or, or just sort of rolling your eyes and saying anybody who's even trying to participate in it is stupid, dumb, and or complicit. Like, I just reject that. Like, there's too much at stake. It doesn't mean don't hold, you know, progressives accountable, right? Like the squad, the progressive members of Congress, like they need to be held accountable to their promises to hold out. The corporate Democrats need to be held accountable. But the idea of just rolling your eyes and being like, you know, they're all corrupt. Anybody trying to do any of that is, is you know, fortifying. Why isn't it labeled as holding them accountable by saying you're not going to vote for them? Because your definition of holding them accountable is still supporting them, but doing something to hold them accountable and then support them. Seems a bit stupid to me.
occupying the evil duopoly. Like, no, the, the, other, the, the other way to look at it is like, yes, the duopoly is pathetic and terrible and corrupt, but it's like what we have in the short term, right in the here and now, we're on a scientific environmental ticking time bomb. Uh, so why don't you do something faster to take care of it other than electoralism, which is a lot slower? Time scale here. And like, we've got to do anything that we can to make the system respond. Yeah, I mean, to your point, I love everything you said there, because the people who take that position, the, they're all corrupt and they just check out of the system. To me, that strikes me as a war on nuance and like just really sloppy thinking. Because in here my we go with the whole bullshit nuance thing. Because when you start to criticize Democrat and compare them the same, then you start, they don't have any nuance. Nuance is cold word for let me go ahead and not pay attention, not pay attention, not uh, have consequences. Actually, let me play this again. My opinion, the fact of the matter is most of them. Mental ticking time. And I want to articulate this point. A different way so i want to make sure i got the word right like, that he said we've got to do anything so let me make sure i get what he said start. right before i say what i was yeah say i mean here. to your point i love everything you said there because the people who take that position the, they're all corrupt and they just check out of the system to me that strikes me as a war on nuance and like just re let me let me let him finish the really before I say. sloppy thinking because in my opinion the fact of the matter is most of them are corrupt the overwhelming majority of them are corrupt, but that doesn't mean that they're all corrupt. That certainly doesn't mean they're all the same. And that definitely doesn't mean that you don't even have instances of somebody who is corrupt, who might happen to do the right thing every now and then. For example, Joe Biden getting out of Afghanistan, pulling all the troops out of Afghanistan. So like you said, there's just. Just so he can send them somewhere else. I, I really don't know how Kyle still, I don't know who listens to Kyle. Never been a fan of Kyle, never listened to him, even in my uh, radicalization, never, he wasn't a person I listened to. He doesn't strike me as a person who whose political intellect is anything other than a person who talks about politics on a surface level. He doesn't strike me as a person who knows a lot about politics. He doesn't strike me as a person he doesn't have great takes like this so much. I don't get why people listen to this guy. I really don't. The nuance argument from reformist leftists is another way of them saying, we know they're terrible, but they're a little bit less terrible. That's what they mean by nuance. The nuance is the Democrats are a, are a sliver difference. See the nuance? This is uh, terrible. But let's listen to some more of this. There's just I'm so too glad much. you say that. Let me just, can I just say, I'm so glad you said that because here's the underneath so much of this is the, the, the ESPNization, as I've called it, the ESPNization of politics, to see it as a team sport and to see uh, the the idols that we were, you know politicians are idols they're either good or they're bad uh, they're uh, always good people or bad people but actually what what they should be looked at they're chess pieces on a chessboard they're machine inputs into a machine when you're playing chess do you have control of the pieces? We made a chess move and the pieces didn't respond. Remember force the vote? That was a chess move. But the pieces on the board did not respond. Let's continue. Machine. They're essentially they're 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 an input into an apparatus, and the question is, what outcome do you want from the apparatus? You know, like I know some politicians. I you know, I'm I, I'm friendly with with some. I, I know some poli. You're married one. You're married to one, David. 
What do you mean you know some politicians? You fuck some politicians, David. Some of them, like, you know, that I've, you know, that I've known for years and years, right? Like, but ultimately, like. Like your wife that you've known for years and years. Understand that in their job, they're a machine input. I, you know, I or we or society needs them, that the system that they're in to produce an outcome, you know, it, to put it in the, you know, Jerry Maguire, it's not show friends, it's show business that ultimately you can be, somebody can, you can be friendly with or think they're a nice person, but like when it comes time to having them do their job to get an, uh, to get an outcome that we need to, you know, for instance, survive the climate crisis, it doesn't matter if they're nice or friendly or whatever. And I think the problem is, is that we've been, there's so much of a propaganda system designed to make you think that, oh, you know, that person must be a good person. That person must be a bad person. And therefore I'm with the good person, even when they're doing bad and I'm against the bad person when they're doing good. And, mm. and that confuses what it should really be about is I don't care if they're good or bad people. Like, I don't care if Joe Biden's a nice guy or a terrible guy. Like, I don't care about any of that. The only thing I care about is like, you know, being able to afford health care, uh, having my community and the world survive the climate crisis. And I don't care if Joe Biden's not nice, nice. I don't care. If Joe Manchin's a great guy, a terrible guy. All I care about is the outcome. And I think that is the way we need to look at politics. Everybody looks at politics that way. <sighs> These people are so unimpressive. I don't know how they're in the positions there are. David Sirota is so unimpressive to me. <sighs> Not as a some sort of sporting event. Not as some sort of, you know, you know, you're rooting for the good guys or the bad guys. It's a machine that we need outcomes from. How do we tune the machine? How do we make sure the inputs into the machine are delivering those outcomes that benefit the public and not the donor class only? Yeah. And, and the biggest problem with the political nihilism pill, in my opinion, is that ultimately it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where you sit on the sidelines and you wait to say, I told you so. Yeah. You wait there's just a whole lot of like logical, their logic of jumping from one thing to it. It, it, it doesn't, there's no logic behind what you're saying, Kyle. Let's Biggest listen problem again. With the political nihilism pill, in my opinion, is that ultimately it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where you sit on the sidelines and you wait to say, I what is the prophecy you're fulfilling by saying you're not, th that's the part I'm saying. Because self-fulfilling prophecy would be like, if you say I'm broke, then I'm going to be broke. So what is the self-fulfilling prophecy? That the system is terrible and the system is not going to do anything? Is that a self-fulfilling prophecy or are we telling history? You're saying a self-fulfilling pro prophecy as if we don't have history to show. That this nothing is being done. So you're trying to say that, oh, it's self-fulfilling because you're a nihilist saying I'm not doing that because nothing's gonna happen, and then nothing's happening. You're trying to say it didn't happen because I didn't I I did I sat out, which is bullshit. More people voted in 2020, and who did we get? More people than ever, like more than 70 million people per candidate got votes. What did that do? People who were nihilists before came out and voted this time. And how did that work out? So that's the end. Let's let's go a little bit before in the beginning because it ends the, the interview there but let's go in the beginning and see what he says in the beginning realistic given <laughs> what you've seen in david how do you not become just sort of like totally nihilistic given <laughs> what you've seen in washington on capitol Hill? but you see how they talk about the term nihilistic in a like a it's bad 
We we just talked about the definition through on that, that that short video. People who believe that the system is so far gone, so corrupt, it must be destroyed rather than reformed. But you're talking about nihilism as you're talking about how do you not be nihilist as just saying, I'm checking out, I'm not doing nothing else. You keep portraying it that way. And that is not what it is. Well, in political campaigns, doing this reporting and really exposing, as you said earlier, how little the will of the people actually matters. Um, to a lot of these stakeholders in Washington, like what keeps you from just going down the path of total nihilism? Uh, well, I mean, I will, uh, I will admit that like on my darkest moments, I, you know, have, you go down thoughts. that path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, you know, I, I get depressed. I get de demoralized. Like, like anybody else who pays attention to this and takes, you know, actually, you know, believes in, you know, trying to do good things that help, you know, society. Right. I mean, it's, it's demoralizing. But I also, you know, like I have children. Uh, I have a community that I love. Um, I, you know, I myself. Don't so why are you going through the Democratic Party? Because the Democratic Party is funding the, is upping the money to the military industrial complex, which is the biggest polluter, which will affect your kids. So when you say you have kids, which do I do too, why are you going through the Democratic Party? They're funding the destruction of your child's future. Let's see some more here. I don't want to, for instance, die in a fire tornado, right? So I'd like the climate <laughs> crisis to be uh, dealt with, right? So like, I'm sort of like, if, if you're, if you're a, a citizen in the world and, and you know care about some basic things, then this system is rotted. It's terrible. It needs to be fixed, uh, and you've got to participate in fixing it. Uh, you see, for them, it's about fixing the existing structure. For them, fixing the exit. This is why we call them reformist left. They want to reform the plantation. They want to reform slavery that's what they want to do you see how ridiculous that shit sounds because we can clearly we clearly as all of us clearly know slavery was terrible all of us clearly know that slavery can't be reformed so can't the democratic party is the same thing reforming slavery is just absurd just as absurd as trying to reform the democratic party just as it's absurd. So what if you're for defund the police? Is is joining is going with the Democratic Party? Is that what you need to do? Because they clearly said they're not for that. What if you're for defunding or defunding the military industrial complex? They just gave them more money and said they're gonna be doing that. So we you want us to be excited or want to join a team that literally their policies are opposite of what we want. They want Obamacare, not Medicare for all. Uh, Green New Deal we want, not the Democrats version, but the Green Party's version of the Green New Deal. They're talking about a couple of billion dollars. When something like 15, 19 million is needed, 19 trillion, I'm sorry, is needed. And they're talking about billions that didn't even get passed. So what are you talking about? So let me use, I use this analogy all the time. When I'm talking about the Democratic Party being serious about the climate change, when you say, oh, at least there's something. If I showed up to a car dealership to purchase a $20,000 car with $1,000, am I serious about buying the car? So if climate change needs something like the military industrial complex to be cut by $400 billion for military bases to be cut down to like 100, 
How exactly are we going to get that done through the Democratic Party? How? So we're supposed to fight Republicans to get to office, and then we're supposed to fight our own party for the policies that they already said they don't want. Let's continue. Let's see uh, if he has anything else before it gets to the part that we've already listened to. You know, uh, there's an old, uh, you know, uh, uh, line from a my religious tradition, which says, you know, you're not obligated to complete the work, but you you also can't walk away from the work. Uh, I'm paraphrasing mm. here, but like, you know, like you're you're we're not going to complete all you know the work of fixing the world, but you can't also just walk away from it. So. You know, like this is the world we live in. Like we have to try, and I think that, like, yes, I've had moments where I'm like, you know what, I'm I'm out. Like I'm done. I I, I hate this. I can't look at it every day. I like it's it's so nauseating. It's yeah, so you pointless. <laughs> and I have those days. And you know, like, yeah, you have those days. And then you check your bank account, and then you say, oh, back to my shit. Right, right, David. Right, David fucking uh like this video we're at 270 likes let's see if we can get to 300 um get more people in the chat i think we can get another 30 another 20 minutes or so um but let's get back i, I get so upset because It's like I'm talking to people who have no concept, no idea, no reference point for the people at the bottom who will continue to suffer if we go through, if we continue with this Democratic Party inside bullshit. Like, and by the way, I don't begrudge people who say, look, I, I just I can't focus on this anymore. It's just too, it's too depressing. I'm not saying like those people are bad. I get that impulse. But I also think like and by the way, I also think like just saying, oh, you know, they're all corrupt. You know, nothing good can possibly happen. And anybody who's trying to work in that system, you must be corrupt. Let's 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 say what he says. Are all the politicians corrupt? I would say it Yes. So let's take his next point. They're all corrupt because you're acting like we're just saying it as if it's not true. By the way, I also think like just saying, oh, you know, they're all corrupt. You know, nothing good can possibly. Ha Couldn't something good possibly happen through electoral politics? I guess that would be your definition of good, because some people will allow crumbs to be given and they'll be like, this is great. happen and anybody who's trying to work in that system you must be corrupt or at least stupid by trying to fix things because the whole i wouldn't say everybody but i would say you in particular david you have a wife and there's i mean come on you got your oscar thing why are you doing this for what what is what is your purpose in this but to sheepdog people back to the democratic party where your wife is a member of it's funny how when you mention you know a lot of Democrats, you didn't bring that up here, David. The whole system is corrupt. You know, sort of the black pill idea. Like, I just, you yeah. know, there's the blue pill, the red pill, and the black. Like, I reject that, too. Like, you're not smarter by just walking away. Yeah, yeah, like, I am. Not yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah, we are. We are smarter of walking away from a system that doesn't give a fuck about us, and it's not going to be responsive. You are. Or we are. Let's get some comments. Um, I'm going to be getting out of here in about 20 minutes or so. But let's get to some comments. I've been not able to get to some. Let's go back. Okay, so Green New Deal needs to, needs to include Medicare for All, Living Wage, Federal Jobs Guarantee. Yep, she's... Okay, we are talking about something else. Cut down military bases to zero is what the world needs. Absolutely. Big uh, Le Le Lebowski nihilists, we believe we believe in nothing. I 
I don't know. Never seen it. Not going to see it. I don't know the movie. Didn't see it. Not going to see it. Have no interest in watching rich people pretend to be not rich people. Fuck them. Especially Leonardo DiCaprio. So I'm good. I'm shocked they think this is a good strategy to get people to vote. That is that is a great po point you're making here. He's making you hate Dems more, not less. Great, great point. He gets paid to absolutely. We have to save capitalism is basically what he is saying. We have to save these terrible. Let's like reform the party. Do you know how much reforming is needed to reform the Democratic Party? And do you understand that reforming it requires the people who are who are benefiting from it to say, hey, I don't want to benefit from it again. No one is walking away just breaking with the Wall Street, just breaking with Wall Street to overthrow Wall Street. Exactly, David. David, you aren't trying. You are putting on a show so you don't have to try. That is exactly uh, what I believe also. If you don't vote blue, you're a nihilist just to add to the list of S uh, social warrior justice. Is that what that is? Historical insults? Maybe it's not. Um, like you're right wing, blah, 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 but we ain't going to give you health care. Anna. I seen you in a while. Anna Jackson, the people who don't want to become nihilists are the ones with safety nets. I have nothing to lose. That is a great point. The people who don't want to become nihilists are the ones with safety nets. Let's see, was I going down or up? Sorota uh, is an agent of the bourgeoisie. I absolutely think that too. I actually do think that too. They're all like these people who are who tweet all the great things. But they're in the same circles as the corporate media. They're in the same circle circles as corporate press. Let me tell you something. Um, yeah, I, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. And again, the people. Oh, I'm going backwards. I need to go the other way. Here we go. Republicans and Democrats are irredeemable. Gaslighting us right to our faces. That's that's what he's doing. <laughs> yes, I know it's nihilism. Um, but I, I say nihilism. I, I know it's nihilism. Somebody else pointed it out. And I did have a video uh, with uh, Frederick set, but I'm not going to play that video today. Maybe another time I'll do that. Uh, Sirota pretending that none could possibly suffer more than him. Ain't that something? David might have a point if the Debopoli weren't a cult. Cult. That is true. That's a good point. Uh, that's what we call white privilege. Nick was in the chat earlier. Oh, he was? I didn't even see him, but I don't know. I wasn't even paying attention. Uh... Yeah. Kashama to me is it. I can't think of another one. Like the fact that she's a, a socialist and elected as a socialist. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, uh, okay. Let me put this one on screen. No, av no advocating for social safety net is the opposite of ne nihilism. No, advocating for a social safety net is the opposite of. That's the and that's the point I was saying. Like the the, the they're kind of misusing the word because we have other plans. We're saying we don't want to participate, and we have other things we should be doing in place of it. That's not nihilism. That's not nihilistic. We're smarter trying to figure out moves outside of electoral politics. I'm all for mass general strike, big bill Hayward style, hands in our pockets with demands. So, all right, so let's let's get to the next uh, 
thing here. I'll take that off of the screen. And the next thing I wanted to do is talk about your comments on Twitter about this topic, nihilism, or uh, nihilism. Um, let's share that now. My tweet. So this is the tweet. Let's check out your comments. Let's check out the quote tweets first here. Um, INN members lift speak on the new buzzword for reformist leftists. So go see Indie Networks, uh, Indie News Network. They're actually covering this too. I'm going to retweet that for them. And then Nihilist is the new label they want to put on us here and breaking it down here. Oh, she's also breaking it down. So it looks like that is Tara Reid. Not the person, but they tagged Tara Reid. And here is uh, Nick. Let me make sure this is on the screen here. And here is Nick. Oops, got so many tabs open. Uh, the same progressive frauds went from crying about kids in cages to attacking people who refuse to support the party that funds them more as nihilists. Absolutely. <laughs> This uh, this graphic, this person. I have to put it up. Let's look at him. I stand with as <laughs> uh, Kyle Kalinsky. Is there another one? Oops, all shit libs. Oh, I like this one. I like the Captain Crunch. I was a Captain Crunch fan. I'm a Captain. I like this this one. So can I save this? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna save this. All right, so let's go down some more. And then, of course, friend of the show, Comrade Misty, she probably says, I am a proud nihilist. So now let's go to some of the comments that you've made here. Get your comments on screen for everybody. Let's do this here. Okay, so let's see what people are saying. It was pretty much a term. It was pretty much a term a neoliberal read in their word of the day calendar and decided to use it in a sentence to describe someone he or she did not like. And we ended up with a bunch of limbing regur regurgitating that word everywhere, everywhere. Absolutely. Please, for the love of everything, stop this two party insanity and save our communities and the planet. You're not making any sense. Sounds. Sounds to me like you're just believing in nothing and don't care about anything. So this person is being sarcastic and playing out what they're saying, calling us nihilists. It's like, well, how are we nihilists when we are saying this? Please, for the love of everything, stop this two-party insanity and save our communities and the planet. That's what we're saying. And then the, the, the response is, you're not making any sense. Sounds to me like you're just believing in nothing and don't care about anything. The issue, the issue, one another issue with rich white liberals being the main voices is that they want to stick with the Democratic Party. They want to, we're not going to pull them away. This is a better way of saying it. We're not going to pull them away to a revolution. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, we're not pulling crystal ball away. For some revolution. We're not pulling Jen Perlman away for some revolution. They're invested in this civil, comfortable, air-conditioned way of pretending to get change through electoral politics. Let's continue. My views towards the duopoly any any holistic, yes. I'm totally optimistic about what comes after, perhaps naively, but one thing's for sure, we cannot keep going like this with this uh, main, uh, Monaco loser in charge. Maniac loser in charge, I think. This is somebody I have muted, so I'm not reading that. 
the ironic thing is that the very same people going around saying we we need to be willing to take risk willing to take to risk a nuclear war between the superpowers are the same ones going around calling other people nihilists <laughs> that is another great point the duopoly is fixed and we can water them down to no existence with a third party register and vote third party there's more of us so if you feel the need so that's another thing that's another thing so actually no because i was going to go the third party argument but they know about third parties the people who are saying nihilists that's another thing how are we nihilists if we're voting for the green party how how is that a nihilist how is how is it only a nihilist that you don't want to participate in the the red and blue? They're just like putting together definitions of words. Like I voted green. Most of the people I know voted green. We did a third party summit, but that's not good enough. You don't want us voting voting third party. You want us voting blue. To elect more spineless progressive Democrats who won't do anything. Let's read another comment. Believing in a better future is nihilism now. Let's read, tweet that one. <laughs> I like this one. Parrots can also repeat words that they don't know the meaning of. Referring to me saying like, the word is so misused. It's misused all the time. I'm convinced nobody uses the word to refer to politics knows what the fuck it means. How can anyone look at the trajectory we're on and not see that status quo politics is nihilism? That was one of the points I made in a different rant. <laughs> it wasn't specifically, the video wasn't specifically on nihilism like this one, but we did talk about it. And that was my point is like, if anybody's nihilistic, is you saying, I've given up on voting who I really would vote for to vote for a Democrat because he's the less, he or she is the lesser of two evils. I would say that's more closely aligned with being a nihilist than not. Um, all right. So I think that's a good amount um, of comments. I do want to bring on this last video, if I can find it really quick quickly here where are... where is it yeah yeah and i found some ridiculous stuff i'm not gonna even bring that up but uh so let's let's go here one second to everybody while you while you're waiting for me to pull this up, if you could like the stream, let's get some more people into the chats for the last you know 20 minutes or so, maybe 15 minutes, depending on if I can find this video or not. Oh wow. Um I think I'm gonna wow. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to have to do a different segment. So I guess um, there's some a new some new stuff out on Chuck Todd, but I, I'll, I'll wait to cover that. All right. So it looks like I may not be able to find um, uh, this video. This is small on taking on my Amazon. And I saw Christian Smalls. Oh, that was it. Christian Smalls was... Christian Smalls was on The Breakfast Club. Um, yeah. Oh, Chris, yeah. So let me actually go to that. So uh, that was one of the clips I was looking for. Everybody be patient with me, please. I am. This is a one clip. I didn't, for some reason, I thought I didn't think I would have time to get to it. And that's why I didn't have it already. Uh, prepared wow this is another one so i guess he did and eventually <sighs> so
So my topic yesterday was let's see how the white lefty media is going to cover the Buffalo mass shooting massacre, the racist Buffalo mass shooting. Are they going to analyze it? Are they going to be able to analyze, do this racial analysis or this analysis about this racist issue? Will they be able to analyze, uh, give a good analysis or will they just fall back to their comfort zone of blaming Tucker Carlson. And it's about white comfort. Because if you say it's Tucker, see, Tucker Carlson did this, instead of saying it's ingrained in our white culture, you could just say, see, it, we have racism, but just, just like Tucker Carlson, and it's not ingrained in our system. Right? So, I just can't believe, so, Rational National, took that perspective i ended up being true that lefty white lefty media fell back to their comfort zone of tucker carlson playing the blue red game again so let me share that let me actually stop sharing this here share the next one this is so this would have been part of my last stream yesterday because but i don't know if this was out when i did my stream because I don't, I research and I remember this video being up. But let's listen to what he says here. Of course, you're not working to import as many new citizens as we can into the United States to replace all the disobedient ones who didn't vote for us. In other words, you're being replaced, and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. The great replacement theory, it's a lie. They yell, George Soros has nothing to do with that. Stop talking. They said we were espousing something called the great replacement theory, a well-known racist fantasy. The great replacement. They acknowledge that it's real and they love it. This policy is called the great replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. The great replacement plan is working. That was the most popular cable news show host in America using overt white supremacist talking points on his program. Now, on this show, we've talked about how the Great Replacement Theory is extremely dangerous and explicitly white nationalist. But over So, like I said yesterday, the Great, or the Replacement Theory, and sometimes you, can, you call it a Great Replacement, but the Replacement Theory is decades old. The Replacement Theory was also used for when interracial marriages was the topic. Uh, if 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 me as a white person have a baby with this black person, look how the baby comes out black. Replacement theory. So we're being replaced because look, it was used for that too. So the I and and another thing, all of the immigration videos on Fox News, for example, why is immigration such a big thing? Replacement theory. So. For white lefty media to pretend like Tucker Carlson is the person who made this what it is, is just simply absurd. Completely disregarding the ingrained white supremacy in this country. But this is all they know how to do. But over the weekend, as you probably heard, one white supremacist decided to take action over this particular issue that's been talked about on Fox News, and he committed a massacre in Buffalo, killed 10 people. As John Keeley of Common Dreams reports, taken into custody at the scene the of the dude, The kid was 18 years old. You think an 18-year-old kid is watching fucking Fox News where the, the medium age of their viewers is like in the 60s? But you want to act like it's Tucker Carlson. And Tucker Carlson is terrible, a terrible piece of shit racist. But this, you only, you making this about him is letting off all the white supremacy that's ingrained in our system. The mass shooting at the Tops Market and identified as Peyton Gendron, the white 18-year-old male 
charged with the murders of the victims, live streamed his attack online, where he also posted a detailed 180 page document that has been described by those who have reviewed it, including journalists and law enforcement, as a white nationalist manifesto rife with anti black racism, anti Semitism, and conspiracy theories about white replacement. According to local News 4 in Buffalo, the document, which News 4 has reviewed, plotted the attack in grotesque detail. The writer plotted his actions down to the minute, including diagrams of his path through the store, and said he specifically targeted the Topps Market's level. Final time I'm asking for the like, or not the final time. Um, I got one more at the end. We're at 330 likes. We can probably get to about 350 in the next 20 minutes. So if you would like the video, that would help us out. 227 people watching, 29 people now watching right now. Let's get back to this video. And then we're going to end it after this. Its location on Jefferson Avenue because its zip code has the highest percentage of black people close enough to where he lives. Now, in his manifesto, he referenced the Christchurch shooter who murdered 51 people in a mosque in New Zealand. And I mean, this is going to keep happening. That's really the tragedy of the situation, right? This is so he so the person he referenced in the in the thing in the uh, manifesto. There's you don't do a video on that person. The one he the, the killer says inspired me. You do a video on Tucker Carlson so you can be part of the blue red fight. So you can say, see, Republicans. Is going to continue to happen. Um, specifically, domestic terror attacks by white supremacists will continue to happen because this is the specific environment that right wing media is fostering currently. And it's not. I'm going to stop it here because he's just going to piss me off with this. He's white supremacy didn't start with Fox News. White supremacy, the perpetuation of white supremacy would do just fine without Fox News. Three million people, four million people watch Fox News. We have over 325 million people here. Stop it. And this is what reformist leftists like Michael here or Mike here want us to believe that non-racist white people stumbled upon Fox News, saw him talking about replacement theory, thought about it and said, I've been non-racist all my life, but after Tucker Carlson's segment, I'm, I'm racist now. And not that Tucker Carlson is just simply preaching to the choir. Not convincing anybody, people who already don't want immigration here, which is which is an expression of uh oops. Uh which is which is an expression of replacement theory. They didn't take any convincing. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop it there. Um, just can't uh, take any more. Let me, let me show you this here. Let me show you my bookmarks. Remember in David Sirota? It's climate change, right? We, we got to vote for somebody. Then this is the game we have. Democrats, and it's the best, right? Let's look. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's look at who is potentially going to be named as... Actually, let me bring it up before I say it. Biden's potential next climate advisor has ties to big oil. But you're telling me, David Sirota, that you have kids. There's a climate crisis that's pressing. And we need to participate to elect what? More Democrats. For the climate crisis, so that Democrats can appoint people like this who has ties to big oil. That's what we're supposed to do, David? Let me click on the article here.
All right, let's let me see if I can get it here on the screen without stopping the share. All right, so it looks like it worked. All right, so here is the article. Biden's potential next climate advisor has ties to big oil. Deputy advisor Ali Zadi spent the Trump years at law firms that represented fossil fuel companies and private equity giants profiteering from the climate crisis. So let's let's go vote um, for some Democrats. Let's get them in. So that this could happen. White House National Climate Advisor Jenny McCarthy is reportedly pre preparing to step down from her position coordinating the Biden administration's climate agenda sometime in the coming months. President Biden tapped McCarthy, a former environmentalist protection administrator, to serve in the cabinet level position in 2020, hoping that his pick for the first ever national climate advisor would reflect the urgency of the climate crisis. Though no official decision has been made, McCarthy's deputy, Ali Zadi, is widely expected to replace her. So there you go. Yet another reason to be nihilistic, right? So um, I think that's that's where I'm going to uh, end this here. Now, there is um, a video I'm going to play for everybody here. Where is it? Is this it here? Is this the climbing video? Oh, let's play this entertainer one. Um, so this is in Malcolm X. I seem to always play Malcolm X. So now that we're going to be signing off, please like the video for the last time. I'm asking to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We've already hit 17,100. So thank you for all your support and getting us there to this uh, milestone. Let's Now it's onward to 17,000. Um, let me give you an update on the likes here. We do have the outsider's view up at 9 p.m. Eastern. So in about 25 minutes, that's going to be coming up. Waiting for this to refresh here. Uh, okay, so we are at 371. So 30 more to get to 400. Can we get 30 more to get to 400? 30 more likes to get to 400. Subscribe to our Substack. And um thank you for watching. This was a uh just uh I just jumped jumped on. I wasn't planning. Um I and also I'm going to just say next week I'm going to be off most of next week. Uh just taking some family time uh to take off so for next week that's what i'm gonna be doing um i'm gonna play the video i'll toss up your comments on my way out um playing this video so thank you for everybody who watched thank you for everybody who commented um i love um that was another video i saw uh saw um where they were comparing the two that you bring up here um, so the climate crisis can be solved by less war. I'll leave, I'll leave it. I'll end it with Amy J or, uh, Anna Jackson, um, with that comment, the climate crisis can be solved by less war. Yes. But let's go vote for some more Democrats so we can have more war that does not do that. Right. That's what we're doing. So I'm signing off. Here is Malcolm X. And the stream will end at the end of this clip. Let's try to get to 400 likes and um, stick around or uh, come back at, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific for the Outsiders view right here on the RBN 
uh, network. And here is Brother Malcolm. The uh, poll taken by Newsweek magazine, I think you said that this was the leaders who said that, uh, who went with King and against Mr. Muhammad around 90%. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horn, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and are over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. The uh, whole thing by Newsweek magazine, I 